Well, there are so many evidences and basis for being dis for despairing and having no hope in Nigeria. Somebody who calls himself the Minister of Works actually found the grace to stand in the public space to be justifying how they can be spending three billion for every kilometer of road. Are they paving it with gold because of the greed and avarice? of the commander in chief hello my great and wonderful people we welcome you once again to our today's episode of this program and today we get a lot of videos for our table we're going to be one quickly the review to you concerning the things we're going to be seeing if they happen right now for inside this country nigeria just as you rightly say one from the introduction the video we're going to be seeing with the receiver from Barrister Dele Farotimi and also a human rights activist. I beg, pay attention to this video. You will see a lot of things when it be said this man, the review. Una equally remember, say, anytime when it be said this man, they come outside to speak, if they speak with facts and figures. And after that one, we equally get another video when it be said we receive from Peter Obi. The visit when be say in pay to the Nigerians in diaspora to appreciate them for their great support towards their own election when it be say INEC eventually give to Amebola Tenebon. And even more when it be say with the review, even for the process of this very broker. So we'll just beg you to please sit down and relax with us and equally not forget to help us like this video because the more you like this video the more youtube they recommend them to people now their own policy now and be that very one thank you so much for your support first of all i will leave you to watch this one first i'll come back for more nothing different this people we like you they're thinking the way we're thinking the next time i have program i go to kill them they are the same thing the next time I have a program in Columbia, I go there, same thing. Because people wonder, say, Peter, why do you have time to go to Oxford, Cambridge, London School of Economics, uh, what is it in France? Why do you? I said, I was just going to know where there's something in their brain that led us to be thinking the way we are thinking. But when I go there, and near them are discussing issues, I found out that the same brain, the only thing is that. They have compassion. They care about their people. They test things they believe in that is wrong. And that is what we have. We can't be without Nigeria. I said any day, today is one of the best countries on the surface of the earth. Bless <laughs> my the only thing that it lacks is one thing called leadership. Africa remains the best continent in this world today. The only thing it lacks is leadership. I told the students in Harvard this day, say it again, I said, listen, how do you compare Africa with China? No. We have three times the land space. Africa, China is just 9.6 thousand square kilometers. Africa is 30,000 plus. So we have three times their land, and yet we have the same population 1.4 billion, 1.4 billion. And I say, let me take you people back to just 30 years ago, 1994. And if you look at 1994, Africa had a better per capita than China. They were 474, we were 500, over 550, we were 100 dollars more. People do things that are wrong and believe that they are right. <laughs> in case you have not been told enough, you represent hope and change, not just for Nigerians, but for many of us Africans who consider ourselves an African. <laughs> A possibility for us that if Nigeria gets it right, 
all of us can get it right. We know the role Nigeria played when we had to adopt Sierra Leone and Liberia. Without a strong Nigerian force, ECOMO wouldn't have gone in. Now, for those of us who happen to be here and working at the United Nations, you said we shouldn't give up. I was in Glasgow two weeks ago because I attended Glasgow University. Your young brothers and sisters there, bright, excellent, you are a sacrificial, selfless leader. They have sort of given up. And there are many of us here, maybe gone back, set up business in Enugu, and our brothers dropped the money, maybe in Accra. They have felt the entitlement. What gives you hope? What keeps you going? Why and how do you encourage me now to pack my things here in New Jersey and relocate? I told a Nigerian friend, if I had to come for three months, sacrifice for your success, I would do it quietly, even though I was in Nigeria. The problem is that I didn't have to We desperately need somebody of your caliber. When you mention China, you mention Singapore, Malaysia, all we are thinking, Ghanaians flock to Nigeria, when Nigeria was doing well. We need Nigeria to do well. So sir, what gives you hope? What, what keeps you going when we all live here now? What are we going to say he refused to buy a house in America because Onicha is the best place on earth? Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, my great and wonderful people. I believe say when I don't watch that video, the appreciation visits of Peter Obi to the Nigerians in diaspora, more especially the part of USA, Dallas, Texas. All right, I'll leave you to share your own opinion with us concerning that very one, even as we take you down to this other video when the visit will be received from Barista Dele Farotimin, a human rights activist. The outpouring of this man anger to Amebola Tenebo administration and everyone when the BCE associates with them. I beg pay attention to this video. We'll come back for more. That bridge. Don't look at the persons, look to the ideas that they espouse. Are they promising a new Nigeria, a different way of doing things? Are they promising you citizenship? Are they dealing with the substance of your pains? Do they bear promise that suggests that we might have a turnaround in our country? That is what 2027 is about. It's not, I agree that our current political parties are next to useless. They are almost one and the same, almost without exception, if the truth be told. So I'm not really speaking to anything beyond ideas. And those ideas, if they coalesce and find resonance in your spirit, what happens thereafter is that ideas will bind all of us together. Those ideas are what bound the obedient movement. The obedient movement was in existence long before there was a Peter Obi presidential bid. The obedient movement, was, but what you call the obedient movement today, encompasses a whole lot of people who are in the NSAS movement, a whole lot of people who are in, say, like, enough is enough, a whole lot of people, who, everybody who desired change in Nigeria became part and parcel of the obedient movement. And that had nothing to do with the person of Peter Obi. It was the promise, the promise of change that he embodies. That was what we all coalesced around. It's not about a party. That's why someone like me was very careful to explain from the beginning that I am not a member of the Labour Party. I spoke for Peter Obi, I supported Peter Obi, I still support him today because of the ideals that he represents. He's not an angel, none of us are. Movements are about common ideas. To restructure Nigeria is a highly desirable idea. And it's always been the lodestone of my own arguments in the Nigerian political space. But I have noticed that we've come to a point where we would have to make those ideas political, which means that somebody must stand behind those ideas and make those ideas the central plank of political engagement. In a, in a situation where, one, the NLC is lost, organized labor is completely compromised as at today, 
the civil society organizations, they've been lost long before the emergence of Jaguda. But certainly since around 2011 and their misadventure at Ojota, when they found common purpose with the AC, that's the Action Congress of Tinubu, who was more or less the sole bankroller of the civil rights movement in Nigeria when he was still forming opposition to the PDP. Since that time, what you find is that there has been a fragmentation of Nigerian opposition movement, and it's been almost impossible to find common purpose. So I'm not too sure if it is possible to galvanize sufficient support for a boycott of the 2027 elections whilst we are demanding for a restructuring of Nigeria. But be sure of one thing, I support the idea, but at the end of the day, I'm a realist. I guess age and time forces a lot of realism on us. Now, when you now look at all of these and then you ask yourself, what then is hopelessness? It is having no expectation of good or success. And that is what Nigeria demands of us. It says that we shouldn't hope. Chief Bola Ige, more than any other person, even defines it succinctly. He says, blessed are those who do not hope, for they shall not be disappointed. That was what Chief Bola Ige said about hope. But hope we must, because it is the basis for human existence at any appreciable or intellectual level. Without hope, we're lost. All right, my great and wonderful people. Now, only down if we take from that very message, we'll be so the receiver from Barista Dele Farotsimi, where he basically in the truth some insight concerning this 2027 election. I know a lot of now would talk, say, why he basically this man would talk about 2027 when he basically would never even come out for the first year of 2024. Where it be say yes, this very administration of Amebola Tinubu still the very fresh. 2027 still the very far away, but these politicians, as crook as they are, they have already gone ahead of time planning this 2027 and laying every strategies to make sure say yes, they also defeat the plans and purpose of Nigerians, whether you like them or not. They don't seek any of your permission to do that. They don't see their assess as say they don't conquer this already time when we say all of us day. They are already working ahead of time. So we all must also be very proactive like this uh, barista Dele Farotimi. If truly we feel counter these people, we must go ahead of time in our thinking and also in our preparation and in our actions. All right, after that very one, we equally get this other video. When we say we'll quickly leave you make you watch. And this video now, video when we say it consign this celebrity barman when we say in him now, Kubana Chief Priest. As we talk right now, EFCC don't finally bab this man. Yes. Waiting be the offense when we say EFCC take grab him. The say offense when we say Bob Risky commits. When it be said that they jail him for six months, now in the still hold this man for say it they misuse Naira. And as we talk now, today when it be 17th of April 2024, now the day when it be said EFCC set aside to arraign this man before the Federal High Court of Nigeria. I believe any moment from now, you will see the video how it be said that they carry this man enter courts. But before then, I will leave you to watch this interview first, where EBC therefore review the details of the case when EBC it is around this very man. I'll come back for more. Economic and Financial Crimes Commission has filed a three-count charge against popular Instagram celebrity Pascal Utkuchuku, also known as Kubana Chief Priest, for allegedly spraying and tampering with a Naira at a social event. This act is contrary to the provisions of the Central Bank Act of 2007. Kubana Chief Priest will be arraigned tomorrow, Wednesday, April 17th, before Justice Kende Oguntade of the Federal Court in Lagos. And we can authoritatively confirm that the accused is already in EFCC custody awaiting arraignment.
legal practitioner Ivan Ofeli joins me on the news at 10. What do you make of this new arraignment by the EFCC over the abuse of Naira? Well, the EFCC just um, got another suspect, uh, one who allegedly have committed uh, an offense of uh, mutilating the Naira or tampering the Naira as uh, the charge states. Contrary to Section 21, Subsection 1, 2, 3, and 4 of the Central Bank of Nigeria Act, the CBN Act. Now, the EFCC is uh, of the view from the charge that they have evidence to the effect that the suspect uh, or the, the defendant have breached that Section 21, uh, Sub 1, 2, and 3, 4 of the CBN Act, and as such, um, he is to be arraigned tomorrow. Now, the arraignment will mean that the charge will be read to him, and he will plead either duty or not. Okay, so once that is done, then um, whatever it is he plea will determine where the case will go from there. So considering the precedent with the Bobrisky case, where the judge decided to you know, bring in the full weight of the punishment um, in the form of six months in prison without considering the option of fine. How relevant is that precedent for subsequent ones? Um, can a judge decide to, you know, go the other way without raising suspicions? Yes, a judge can decide to go the other way. Is You see, the option of fine is uh, on the prerogative of the judge under reference. Uh, if he feels that the option of fine is best... Uh, suited for the case on that reference, then he can go for that. That is why it's an option. You understand? If he chooses to, you know, go for the full six months imprisonment, uh, assuming but not conceding that the defendant plead guilty or uh, his his trial had found him so, uh, in that case, you are going to have a situation where the judge will... You see, it does not matter what society thinks. Uh, the law will take its course. Uh, this particular uh, contravention has been there for a long time, uh, but the laws cannot enforce itself. So it's a good thing that the EFCC is looking at uh, these violations. And uh, we want to also add a voice to the effect that EFCC should stretch it further than this to uh, the elites too, who are found uh, spraying the Naira, tampering the Naira, and all that. And the public should also know that it's not just the people who spray the Naira or who deface it, or who step on it. Even those who hawk it, if and then, you look at... All right, my great and wonderful people, I believe you Una don't see the video by Una self. And uh, waiting leads to this very arrest when EBC EFCC arrest uh, this uh, very man. And uh, any moment from now, being the 17th of April, they will be showcase this man for the Federal High Court of Nigeria. Then we will know what will be the fates of Pascal Ikechuku, popularly known as Celebrity Barman. All right, I'll leave you now to share your own opinion with us in the comment section. Just as you hear that very man talk just now, say, you know, start with these people and may the non letter end with these people. We get a lot of elites, influential people, our governors, them, our politicians, them, when EBC, they equally, they do the same. May the mission say they stretch their hand towards every length and breadth of them. We understand, see, for the why, see, most of the governors, when EBC, they involve their sex for this kind of art as well, abuse of Naira, a lot of them, they enjoy immunity as governor, as we they talk now. But may the mission say, any moment when EBC, they step out of office, they must be answerable to the same offense. Now, so we we'll talk about this concerning this matter. We'll leave you to share your own opinion with us on the comment section, even as we draw the line of this very broadcast here. And before we say final goodbye, I beg, we want to beg you again. Don't forget to help us like this video, share, and leave your comment for us for the comment section. We'd like to draw the line here. We'll see you again when we see you. Remember, we love you all. Bye-bye.